Hello, Paradise Panther artists. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to be with you today to tell you about our next master artist, Georgia O'Keeffe. Born in 1887, Georgia was an American artist who painted nature in a way that showed how it made her feel. She is best known for her close-up, large-scale paintings of flowers and desert landscapes. So let's find out how Georgia played such an important role in the development of modern art in America and how she is considered a pioneer in the art world today. Here we go, artists. Let's put ourselves in the period of Georgia O'Keeffe's lifetime. Her lifetime as an American spanned nearly 100 years. Imagine the contrast between riding in a horse-drawn carriage as a child to watching men land on the moon as an adult. And there were not many women artists in the early 1900s. She was a very independent woman for her time, and she fit in very well with her male artist friends. O'Keeffe was a very popular and famous American artist. As happens with fame, many people were curious about her life and her art, so she agreed to be interviewed. That interview was recorded, and you will hear parts of it today. She was in her 90s when this interview took place, so her voice is not always strong and clear. You will have to listen carefully to catch her words. I can see shapes. It's as if my mind creates shapes that I don't know about. I can't say it any other way, that I get this shape in my head. And sometimes I know what it comes from and sometimes I don't. And I think with myself that there are a few shapes that I have repeated a number of times during my life and I haven't known I was repeating them until after I had done it. Here, we can't easily tell what George's shapes are. The shapes we see are not realistic. There is an art word that describes O'Keeffe's way of painting. When things are not realistic, it is an abstract work of art. It doesn't look like a real thing. Abstract art invites us to use our imaginations and feelings. Now, without using your voice, I would like you to raise your hand if you have ever collected something. Raise your hand and your teacher will call on you. Thank you. I'm sure there are many special collections from your classmates who have just shared. You can put your hands down now. This was one of the things that Georgia collected. She collected artificial flowers. She wanted to use them so that she could draw and paint them. Let's remember, though, that O'Keeffe's paintings were abstract, so her painting of this flower would not look just like the real thing. I want you to pretend that you brought your special camera to school today to photograph this flower. Your camera has a powerful zoom lens that brings you closer and closer to the flower. You see less and less of the flower as it is magnified. Let's all pretend to turn our zoom lens on now and tell me what you see of this flower through your camera lens we would see just the petals and the center of the flower if we zoomed in. Georgia looked at her collection of flowers as if she had a zoom lens as part of her eyes. She zoomed in on a flower and painted it very large. This painting reminds me of a flower, but I'm wondering 
Why did O'Keefe scale up her flowers to be so large? Let's listen as she tells us why. There was a collection of paintings in New York that I went to see every once in a while, and they had a new painting, but it was a small picture. It was about 20 by 16, maybe. But the flower was beautifully painted, and I thought, now, if I would paint that flower, just that flower, the size it is, nobody would ever look at it. But if I enjoy the flower, and I would paint it, I'm going to paint it big so they will have to look at it. Georgia painted the flowers so big so that people would notice them. She became very famous for her flower paintings. Here we see another beautiful painting by O'Keeffe. Besides the shapes in these paintings, the color also catches your attention. Look carefully and you can see more than one color of blue in this painting. We also can see several colors of green too. We call those different colors of blue and green values of color. Values of a color can go from very light to very dark. Let's find out how O'Keefe created all of these color values. Georgia would add black to a color to make it darker. Black added to a color makes a shade of that color. And she would add white to a color to make it lighter. White added to a color makes a tint of that color. Now I want you to picture in your mind, like Georgia O'Keeffe, a painting of brown hills with so many values of brown, it's impossible to even count them. And the result is a rich, interesting painting that captures the beauty of nature. Let's see if your picture in your mind looks anything like what O'Keeffe painted. Let's experiment with shades and tints so that you really understand this art concept. Here we see many values of brown. Look at this first value of brown right here. Here we see a tint where white has been added to the brown. Now look at this value of brown. Here we see a shade because black has been added to the brown. Well done. Now you will know how to create your own tints and shades for your art activity. Georgia O'Keeffe was born and lived in the United States for her entire life. She lived in New York for many years, but she preferred another part of America. Her favorite place was a world completely different from New York. And that's where she painted these beautiful hills. Let's listen as she tells you all about her favorite place. When I got to New Mexico, that was mine. As soon as I saw it, that was my country. I'd never seen anything like it before, but it fitted to me exactly. It's something that's in the air. It's just different. The sky is different. The stars are different. The wind is different. I shouldn't say too much about this because other people may get interested and I don't want them interested. <laughs> These hills were part of the landscape that she loved to visit and paint when she left her home in New York. Georgia would hike all over the desert to find vistas to paint and would set up her easel and stay for as long as the daylight held. This painting is titled Black Cross, New Mexico. O'Keefe fell in love with that landscape the first time she visited. She described it as a place with terrible winds and a wonderful emptiness, but she loved the stars, the sky, 
and the wind in New Mexico. Let's look at the colors and shapes in this dramatic painting. We see the black cross and the size of the cross that creates a contrast with the colors and shapes of the hills. Notice how each hill has a shade and tint of its own. Also, notice how each hill gets darker on its outer edge and seems to glow from within. O'Keefe wanted you to look first at the hills. Georgia visited New Mexico in the summer when it would be very hot but she didn't let that stop her from hiking and painting. She would drive her car across the wide open deserts. To stay out of the scorching desert sun, she painted inside her car. She sat in the back and leaned her canvas against the front seat. She found the only shade available under her car, so after eating her lunch, she would climb under the car and take a siesta or a nap. She said it wasn't a very pleasant place to be, but it was better than nothing. Without using your voice, raise your hand if you have a pet dog. Thank you. You can put your hands down now. Georgia loved dogs and had several as pets in New Mexico. The dog in the photo was named Jingo. Now look carefully at the large photo on the left. We can find Georgia and two of her dogs, one right here and the other right here. They look like small dark bushes. She loved taking her dogs for long walks near her home. Remember I told you Georgia liked to collect things, such as artificial silk flowers? Well, she had another collection too, a very unusual one. I bet you have never heard of this kind of collection before. Let me show you. Georgia collected bones on the dry deserts of New Mexico. When Georgia had to return to New York, she wanted to take something with her to remind her of the place she loved. And this is what she chose. As she hiked over the deserts and hills, she would collect dried, bleached animal bones. We usually associate bones with death, but not Georgia. She saw the beautiful shapes and thought the bones were very lively. Look at this hip bone of a cow, as Georgia did. Notice the shapes created against the blue sky. When she had to return to New York each year to be with her husband, she would pack up a big barrel of bones. She accomplished two things by doing that. She could paint them all winter, and she had something to remind her of the desert she loved. This cow's skull was her favorite bone in her big collection. With this painting, she tried to show something not related to bones at all. Your clue is, look at the colors, red, white, and blue. With what do we usually associate the colors red, white, and blue? Go ahead and raise a quiet hand if you have an idea and your teacher will call on you. Yes, that's right. She's trying to show the American flag. Thank you. You can put your hands down now. Georgia said she wanted this to be strictly an American painting. She was very proud of her country and showed it in this unusual way. Sometimes Georgia combined the mountains she loved with her bone paintings. This background shows her favorite mountain called Paternal. It is a flat-topped mountain, a mesa. 
she could see the mountain Paternal from her New Mexico ranch home and enjoyed painting it over and over again. She included this mountain 28 times in her New Mexico paintings, and she called it the far away nearby. Georgia O'Keeffe was married to a very famous photographer, and he took hundreds of pictures of her over a 30 year period. I wonder if she enjoyed posing for him, and I wonder if she posed while painting a flower, a landscape, or bones. Let's find out. In Georgia's words, posing for her husband drove her crazy. The cameras at that time required you to hold still for three to four minutes for each photo. While posing for Alfred Stieglitz, Georgia said in those endless three or four minutes, she would develop an itch and an uncontrollable desire to scratch it. It also interrupted her painting time and she guarded that time for herself. Here, Georgia is painting a flower in this photo, but I don't think it will be just that size. Who knows how large that flower might be? Great job artists learning about one of the most influential female artists in American history. I bet you will never look at a flower the same after seeing Georgia's large, close-up flower paintings. In your art activity, you will be able to apply your new knowledge of color values and shading. But I wonder if you will be creating flowers, landscapes, or bones. You will just have to wait and find out. Have a great day, Paradise Panther artists, and I will see you next time.